Big phones are overplayed. What we really want are tiny phones. Teeny tiny phones like the Unihertz Jelly 2.0. Probably the smallest Android phone that you can buy today, but is it any good? This is our review of this itsy bitsy Android. Thanks for watching 95 Google on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. The Unihertz Jelly 2.0 is actually not much bigger than a Tamagotchi, and by that I mean this feels like a keychain trinket, a small bleeping box that has no right being called a smartphone by today's metrics. While the Jelly 2.0 is small, it's not thin by any stretch of the imagination. It's probably double the thickness of your average Android phone or even a tablet device. It has a 3 inch LCD display, which is actually far more usable and impressive than I had ever anticipated. Yes, it's an LCD, but would an OLED have made a huge difference in such a small form factor? Well, maybe, although I found it cramped at times, but then sometimes the spacing would be huge when it didn't need to be in certain applications. The resolution is a paltry 480 by 854 pixels, but unless you really squint or get up close to the display, then you won't see individual pixels. Personally, I think it is sharp enough for such a small display. It definitely doesn't get bright enough though for my taste, but it is an acceptable panel given everything else on offer here. Let's quickly talk hardware before I give you the lowdown on the actual day-to-day -day usage of this smartphone though. There's a dedicated and customizable hardware button that I left as a torch when double tapping, a 3.5mm headphone port, plus an IR blaster if you do want a tiny TV remote that doubles as an Android phone. Inside the Jelly 2.0 comes with a 2 year old MediaTek Helio P60 chipset and 6GB of RAM. It's not terrible by any metrics, but it's probably a little modest compared to what you're used to. But what is it like to use you ask? Well, it's not actually that terrible thanks to what is a really clean Android 10 software experience. It's essentially stock with a few added extras that don't really affect day to day performance all too much. The capacitive touch buttons are also helpful, but you can use the Android 10 gestures if you really want to, although I do think you should avoid these given the small size of that display. Multitasking is fine and the small screen is at times hard to use, especially with things like the keyboard or when menus are strunk down, but it isn't too bad all things considered. That said, don't even think about playing games though. Yes, you can run Call of Duty Mobile, but boy is it hard to see what's actually going on. It's neat to be able to play these games on such a small display, but I do think you should avoid it if you can. The same can be said for videos and YouTube, it's just not that fun when you're used to a large display. Any on-screen text is also basically illegible on videos too. Hey, I must say it is a solid experience given the size and hardware, but it is lacking compared to what you're likely used to, especially when phones are reaching that phablet size. Let's talk cameras real quickly, as yes, there is a camera here. It is very poor though, and you'll get some odd looks which makes it actually quite fun to use. Results are grainy and not really particularly good in any overall scenario. The same can be said of that selfie camera too. So the only thing left to really talk about is the battery, which has been pretty darn impressive. Considering this has a 2000 mAh cell and small size, 4 hours of daily screen on time are not out of the realm of possibility, but then again I did use the Jelly 2.0 as a secondary device throughout my review period. Realistically, we don't think we can fully recommend the Jelly 2.0 as a main phone, but boy is it fun to use day to day. I really like that it's a tiny backup device that I can keep in my pocket, plus it's under $150. As a fun little gift that is actually useful, it might be perfect. Anyone wanting an actually good small phone might want to look elsewhere though. What do you think though? Stupid idea or neat tech trinket? Let us know down in the comment section below. But until next time, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.